Recently, an Italian team made claims that radar data from satellites can see deep under the Earth's surface. The team says they see 600-meter-tall pylons under the Khafra Pyramid in Giza. Supposedly, this works with tiny vibrations of the Earth's surface, satellite radar, and clever math. Is this science or X-ray specs for Indiana Jones from an old pulp magazine? Let's find out. This episode covers the recent claims of structures beneath the Khafra Pyramid. We'll first briefly cover SAR technology, then we'll discuss the physical mechanisms proposed by the people behind these claims. For brevity, we'll call these people MBM, from the first letters of their names. If you want to see more videos, like and subscribe. Synthetic Aperture Radar, or SAR, creates high-resolution radar images from high altitude, for example from a satellite. Here's one of the satellite networks used by MBM during deployment. SAR doesn't take instant snapshots. Rather, it builds up an image as it travels along its path. This long path is crucial. It lets SAR act as one big virtual antenna, which yields vastly higher resolution. SAR can work in total darkness, through clouds, smoke, or vegetation. That's why it's used in military surveillance, infrastructure diagnostics, and disaster monitoring. With careful processing, modern SAR can detect surface changes on the order of millimeters. This can be used to monitor the condition of structures, like dams, or the aftermath of earthquakes. SAR does not take traditional photos. It records lots of data like energy, range, azimuth, phase, polarization, and time. This data is more like a spreadsheet rather than a photo, though it can be converted into images. Whether the resulting images are useful or meaningful depends entirely on what data was used, how was it processed and presented. In other words, SAR images are interpretations of data. That's why even if they're made to look like photos, they often look unnatural to human eyes. For example, you can visualize the phase or polarization. By themselves, these are just abstract properties, so you'll get strange-looking images. But these properties can be processed and transformed into images that convey meaningful information, like displacement or surface type. To sum this up, just because an image was extracted from radar data, it doesn't mean that this image is inherently meaningful or useful. MBM proposed two different mechanisms for how their SAR technique supposedly detects underground structures. In their patent, they claim that naturally occurring, tiny vibrations in the ground are what allow them to image underground cavities. These vibrations come from natural and human sources, like distant ocean waves, wind, traffic, and urban activity. Basically background seismic noise, always present in the ground. But during their conference, MBM say that it may also be the radar waves themselves that induce tiny mechanical vibrations, or as they call it, photon-phonon exchanges. Proposing not one, but two, separate physical mechanisms that lead to such a useful technique seems unusual. In science, generally speaking, if multiple approaches lead to a new discovery, it makes this discovery more likely to occur. Seems odd that despite two separate physical mechanisms leading to such a useful invention as detecting deep underground cavities, it has not been possible so far. But for now, let's take these two offered explanations at face value. The first mechanism MBM proposed to justify their claims is seismic background noise. Here are the problems with this explanation. Problem 1. MBM claim that with SAR and their techniques, they can detect ground motions on submillimeter scale. In typical, real-life operation, some variants of interferometric SAR, or INSAR, can achieve range resolution of 1 millimeter. In perfect atmospheric conditions, with very stable reflectors, INSAR can reach its current limit of about one-tenth of a millimeter. 
In 1993, USGS collated data for about 100 seismic stations across the world to establish the baseline background seismic noise on Earth. From this data we can compute that at a typical frequency of 0.2 Hz, the ground moves about 6 microns, or about 0.006 mm. Egypt has a seismic network which monitors ambient seismic noise. The respective power spectra in Egypt are the same as elsewhere on Earth. Outside Cairo, even with peak traffic and Mediterranean waves, seismic noise maxes out at about 0.01 mm, which is under INSAR's sensitivity threshold. All this raises an obvious question. How can MBM detect seismic noise in Egypt from the orbit if it's about 10 times lower than the detection threshold of today's technology? Problem 2. The power spectrum of seismic noise is heavily skewed towards very low frequencies. Some wave component periods can be in the tens of seconds. In our context, the capture window for low-orbit SAR satellites is on the order of few seconds. This is insufficient to capture many of the lowest frequencies. Problem 3. Low frequencies translate to long wavelengths. We're talking hundreds of meters, up to thousands of kilometers. Such long wavelengths cannot detect detail on the scale of the reported structures, only huge geological features. Problem 4. Many seismic waves actually ride on top of Earth's surface, not through the interior. Even if you could detect seismic background noise from the orbit, you'd probably see surface waves, not the interior waves you're interested in. To sum it up, given the current state of technology, these issues make it improbable for seismic background noise to be used to detect man-made cavities with SAR, as described by MBM. The second mechanism MBM proposed to justify their claims goes something like this. Part of the radar waves enters the ground and turns into sound waves. These sound waves bounce off underground structures in coherent ways, like sonar, return to the surface, then turn back into radio waves and return to the radar as an echo. This mechanism is pure fantasy. The primary crystal type in limestone is calcite. This graph shows calcite's phonon response, the puny frequencies and tiny amplitude of a radar signal don't even register here. All that happens when radar waves hit solid rock is that some of their energy is converted into a tiny amount of heat. And at that very moment, the radar waves will lose all coherence, because heat is not coherent. Given the size of the Giza Plateau, this tiny amount of heat has no significance. What MBM describes is like encoding a song into microwaves in a microwave oven, beaming it into a hamburger, and expecting the hamburger to echo the song back to you. Here's what will actually happen. Some of the microwaves will bounce back. Some will agitate water molecules, creating heat. The heat will then radiate out into the environment, but only as a mixture of random frequencies. This heat coming from inside the hamburger will not be a recognizable echo of the signal you sent in. MBM throw around the term phonon as if it were a generic synonym for vibration in matter. They mention them along photons with no clarification, as if both were real things. Phonon is a human-made abstraction. It does not exist in the real world. It's a mode of vibration in atom lattices, which can be represented as a quasi-particle to simplify things for us. The concept of phonons is used in solid-state physics, lasers, semiconductors, material science, etc. This term is not used to describe simple mechanical vibration in limestone, a disordered aggregate of tiny calcite crystals full of pores, fractures, impurities, and preserved numulites. Yes, photon-phonon-photon transitions can be achieved, but it happens in physics labs, in controlled conditions, often in cryo-temperatures, and with atom lattices engineered for coupling. Seems like the only reason MBM uses terms like phonons here is to mystify a non-specialist audience with unnecessary jargon. To support their claims, MBM showcases of supposed past detection of underground features with their technique. They're not very convincing. Here's why. This is the Mosul Dam in Iraq. MBM claimed to have detected the Grouting Gallery, a maintenance tunnel which runs lengthwise under the base of the dam. 
MBM's image shows the gallery, a hollow space, as blue on red. Using MBM's lingo, it shows less energy surrounded by more energy. The pylons under Khafre's pyramid are also supposed to be hollow. Yet the colors are now mysteriously inverted. Now it's red on blue. How can the same sensing method show hollow spaces as less energy than background in one case, and as more energy in another case? Do the laws of physics flip between Mosul and Giza? Some of the other examples of the supposed past detections of underground features look very strange. We're shown what looks like elongated cutouts from some color mapped images, pasted on top of the actual photos. Except the color details in the pasted overlays don't seem aligned at all with the overall shape of the supposed feature. Some color details seem to actually cut across the supposedly detected shape. Why aren't the color-mapped images shown in their entirety, next to the respective photos? Cutting and pasting color shapes onto a real photo tells us absolutely nothing about the efficacy of the SAR technique. It only tells us that whoever made this picture can use Photoshop. But there's a much more basic problem with these alleged past proofs. MBM's claims about the Giza Plateau are predictions, claims about facts or features not yet known to anyone. But all the alleged past proofs of their technique are post-dictions, claims about facts or features already known. There's a big difference between these two. The fact that you can post-dict doesn't mean you can predict. A post-diction is a weaker argument than a prediction. That's because knowing the desired result, you can tweak your data or rules to match the result, even subconsciously. Ptolemy could explain all orbits of known objects with epicycles, because if you stack enough circles upon circles, you can match any shape. But he couldn't predict orbits of yet unknown objects. It took Copernicus, Galileo, Kepler and Newton to work out the real model of the motions in the cosmos, which now can predict orbits of objects not yet known. Verifying a predictive method involves prediction, not postdiction. Here's how it can be done in this case. This is a map of the catacombs of Odessa. Near the mapped areas we see here are sections still not explored. There are other locations in the world listed here with an underground network of either man-made or natural cavities. The best test of MBM's technique is an unmapped area in one of these locations where cavities may exist, but are not yet known. MBM can use their method to draw a map of cavities in an unknown area. Afterwards, independent explorers can venture into this unknown area and draw a map of cavities as they really exist. If MBM's predictions work, they will shine in such a test. MBM claim they can image underground cavities with surface vibrations. If true, this would revolutionize fields like oil exploration, mining, geology, seismology, construction, hydrology, utilities, urban transportation, etc. But the most sensational would be its use in military intelligence. Let's have a quick look at the timeline of the technology involved. Background seismic noise and the math involved has been known since around 1950. In modern warfare, very often one side wants to know the layout of underground facilities, like submarine pens, command sites like Cheyenne Mountain, nuclear silos, insurgent cave hideouts, etc. If ambient seismic noise can be used to map underground facilities, why wasn't this ever used during the Cold War or later? MBM claimed that ambient seismic noise can be read from mountainsides to detect cavities underneath. If this is the case, you don't even need satellites, new or old. You can just send in spies to attach portable seismographs with radio transmitters to the mountain near a secret underground site. The spies would install and hide the seismographs, then just leave. Then, through radio, your side would get a map of underground cavities, without drilling a single hole or trying to infiltrate the complex. Why wasn't this technique used when it really mattered? Let's recap what we've learned here. The authors claim to have invented a way to see hidden chambers and tunnels using radar from space. The two mechanisms offered as explanation do not work as described. 
typical seismic ambient noise on Earth is below the threshold of detectability of even the best of today's SAR techniques. You can't have radio waves enter solid matter, turn into a coherent sonar, then re-emit their sonar data as an echo of the original radio waves. As of today, coherent photon-phonon transfers happen only in science labs, under very controlled conditions. All of MBM's alleged success cases are post-dictions, not predictions. If ambient seismic noise could map secret underground sites, why wasn't it used by the military since the 1950s? After watching our video, many people will still ask, so what do these color splotches actually show? No one besides MBM knows, because no one else can see the algorithm and parameters that made these images. It could be some variation in surface properties, compactification, relative moisture, ionic content, level of granularity, quartz percentage, etc. In the unlikely case that these images actually do show underground features, it could be columns of moisture wicking up the plateau's limestone into the pyramids. Or it could be just plain old noise, 